Hey everybody, Professor Snart uh, checking in here. Okay, so we are right into kind of the heart of our course. We're getting towards the end, but obviously in our quicker five-week format, um, you know, everything just moves really fast. So uh, we have, as I've mentioned before, and I'll do it through the due dates here, we've really spent a lot of time kind of putting the pieces, uh, uh, or looking at the pieces individually as far as some of the composition things we want to learn in English 1102, but also some of the research things we want to learn as part of English 1102. And now uh, it seems late in the course, but like I've said before, we sort of learn the pieces individually, put them together in our first essay, which is worth, I would say, more points than most of the smaller items that we've worked through in earlier units. Um, but it's still not kind of the biggest thing that we do. So in some ways, it's still a test run of putting the pieces together and um, you know, I will get feedback uh, back to people as soon as I can, because obviously what you wanna do is find out the grade, I get that, but also sort of what went right, but also maybe what went wrong. And so that's the stuff that, that I'll turn around really quickly back to you so that we can get into our final essay, which is really where the big points for the course are. And I like to think of it as a glass half full situation as opposed to empty. So the empty is that, yeah, it's sort of a, a little bit of a high stakes test kind of thing. There's lots of eggs in that basket, whatever metaphor you want to use. But by the same token, it's all stuff that we have basically done before, either in these kind of smaller ways, in essay number one that you would have got feedback on, so are you doing it right? Does it need attention? And then we're putting it together in our final essay, which unfolds, unlike our first one, over the, the last few units that we've got. And that's what I'm gonna walk us through here. So I know we're still kind of focused on essay one, but because our course moves so quickly, and especially now that we get towards the end, the turnaround time between the various things that we're doing is really quick. Um, so we, were, we wanna all have a, like a clear sort of vision and path forward. And it's really just a couple more weeks that we've got. So I know it's fast, I know it's sort of intensive, but if you can just kind of really focus for the last couple of weeks, you know, that's all that it takes at this point. Um, <clears throat> so the glass half full again of having a lot of points loaded into what will be the final essay down here is that again, there's supposed to be nothing mysterious. You're not guessing at what you're supposed to do. It's all putting into place the stuff that we've learned throughout the course. So again, let's go back to my history example. You take a history class from let's say, you know, American history 1800 to the present. So each of our units would be a, a specific time period, right? We learn about people, dates, events, all that kind of stuff. You do a midterm maybe, and then you do a final exam that puts it all together. It asks like, did you attend class? Did you read the textbook? Did you pay attention? Just sort of all that basic stuff. So do you know the stuff that we learned, the dates, the people, the events? Our situation <clears throat> is really not that different, even though it kind of probably feels different. Our final essay is not like a new thing that we're doing. It is the culmination of all of the stuff that we've done up to this point. And attending class for our purposes is again like working through each of the unit's material, getting feedback, processing what you did right, what you did wrong. Um, same thing with the essay, the, the first essay, so worth a few more points, but still about uh, even giving you the chance to kind of make some stumbles a little bit and then recover for that final essay. So treat it as the opportunity to do things correctly that you've either been doing correctly before or that you've been corrected on up to this point. Um, and again, if there's nothing secret to it. It's all stuff that we would go back to. So what am I looking for, quote unquote? It's all stuff from our course. Um, the shape of the paragraph, shape of the essay, essay idea, effective topic sentences, effective thesis statements, using quotations, integrating quotations effectively. So you can find that through various units, but also even some of that stuff would be like in our MLA citation link. And then speaking of which, a huge part of our course is obviously gonna be working with secondary sources effectively, understanding what they are, making sure they're appropriate and relevant, stuff that we've talked about explicitly, so there's no mystery to that. Um, and then using them effectively, obviously, in your essay. So it's not quite as factual, let's say, as my history example, where the date is the date, uh, the name of the event is the name of the event, there's really no gray area. Uh, we're not quite there, but we're maybe closer than you realize. Like there is, for the writing that we're doing here, the kind of writing that we're doing here, there is an effective way to craft a topic sentence, to integrate a quotation, 
to cite it correctly. And then when it's something like the work cited page, that really is just kind of right or wrong. And again, like I've said before, you're not having to memorize stuff or guess at how to do things. It really all just is following examples and models that are provided either directly in our course or like we link to the library citing sources page that provides the model to follow, gives you, you know, there's examples, um, there's really not a ton of mystery. So the details will be different because you've worked with a different title or author or whatever, but, um, but it really is just following that model provided. Okay, so I'm going to give us a really quick walkthrough of our upcoming units after we finish up essay number one, just to make sure that everybody's on the same page here. So starting in unit nine, everything works towards our final essay. So yes, it's assigned in unit nine, but obviously not due until literally the end of our course. Okay, so a couple new readings to do. Uh, Death of a Salesman, or you can choose Trifles, a play from our textbook, both a little bit longer works, but they read quite quickly, they're plays. And I really uh, encourage people, um, because there's a, a number of good versions of Death of a Salesman, but there's one linked right here, um, to just watch as you read. The, the version here and the one that's maybe more famous starring Dustin Hoffman as uh, or, uh, Willie Loman, uh, they follow the, the text very, very closely, almost word for word. So it's not like they skip a bunch or change things. And it's meant to be seen. So uh, I think reading it, just reading it, honestly, is a little bit artificial. So I'm really encouraging people to, uh, to read it for sure, but to watch it as well, because you can really see some of the things that are going on. Unfortunately, there's no easily accessible or good um, virtual or digital version of uh, trifles to watch. Um, but you may be able to, maybe you can do a better job of Googling it or finding it some, somehow else. But uh, again, it's helpful to watch a play, not just read a play. You'll notice a little quiz here. Um, I'm having some problems with the, what should be the trifles quiz showing up. So I'm actually just going to delete the death of a salesman quiz um, just for simplicity's sake. Get it out of the way. So <clears throat> ignore that part. Okay, the final assignment. So notice that the length here, five to six pages, again, double space, just like the first essay. It's not like all of a sudden we're doing a big 20 page, you know, 30 source research paper. It really should feel like just an extension of um, the skills that we've been practicing through the units and into essay number one. So you're not going to repeat a text or an idea from essay number one, um, but it's not like the scope or the, the type of essay really changes drastically. There's just a couple of things that are going to be different. Uh, first of all, it's a little bit longer, but you'll actually see why in a sec. So we want to include a minimum of three secondary sources, still appropriate, still relevant, just like we've talked about. If you don't understand the appropriate and relevant part for the purposes of our course and the, the type of writing that we're doing here, uh, which we've talked about a number of times, in other words, just not general website or unrelated material, that will have a very dramatic and negative effect on your grade. It's such a core thing that we need to understand. And again, it's not something new here or magical or mystical, stuff that we've covered multiple times. Individually in unit six, it shows up again in the, the first essay. Um, so should be easy to get right. So in the same way that it could have a negative effect if you do it wrong, um, getting it right, which I think should be pretty easy given how sort of explicit it's been throughout our course, it also really contributes in a positive way to your grade. So it's all about that sort of glass half full versus glass half empty. So, okay, three appropriate secondary sources. So a couple more than what we covered for essay number one. Some reminders about all the help that the library can provide, um, you know, looking for sources. And it's not just print stuff that they help with. They'll help with the virtual stuff like we're doing too. Okay, and here's the other big difference for the final essay. Instead of me giving you a set of prompts or topics to choose from, you're going to develop your own, but clearly still in line with the kind of, um, uh, of writing that we've been doing so far. So it's a literary research, just like we did for, for um, essay one. So we're not suddenly doing like Save the Whales or the Environment or uh, Global Warming or some other totally unrelated thing. Um, but you're generating the topic. Okay, so we're going to cover two works of, and we put in quotes, literature here. And this sort of takes us back to unit number two, where we discover that literature is less about 
um, something that's intrinsic to a thing, like this book is literature, oh, this book is not literature. It's really more about how we approach it. So almost any kind of text, um, like a movie, for example, could be taken as quote unquote literature because we're going to approach it in this sort of research based analytical, and for our purposes, comparative way. So take this term literature really in its broadest sense, and again, you'll see why in just a sec. So we're writing a comparison essay. We're finding the similarities between the two primary texts that we choose. How do they share a common uh, theme or maybe a character type, a set of character relationships? Obviously, comparison, right, not contrast. We already know that they're different, so we don't need to write a thesis about that. Um, no more than two primary texts. And here's the interesting part. Okay, so as long as one of the texts is um, from our course, and I'm going to suggest that you choose uh, one of the plays here because A, there's lots of research about them, B, they, there's lots of themes going on, so it makes for easy connections, and it also will prevent you from repeating from your first essay. So uh, that's why the, the new readings are here, and you're invited to use those for your final essay. Okay. So basically, one of the two works for comparison is, you know, from our course, more or less. But the other one is really where you get to bring your kind of experience, your expertise, your, um, you know, uh, uh, interests to bear, because you're choosing it not just from our course or from our book, but kind of from your, right, your own knowledge. So is there a, a movie, a TV episode, um, a... Uh, another novel or book that you've read, a uh, piece of music, for example. I've even had people do uh, like works of art, like paintings. So that becomes the other text. It's clearly not something we covered in our course, but it's something that's more intrinsically interesting to you. And that's how you're gonna build your comparison. Something from our course, basically, compared to something that's sort of from your world versus the world of the course. And so the challenging part, obviously, is that I'm not just telling you what to write about or giving you a, a narrow set of topics to choose from, but you're developing your own. So it's a little harder to get going. And that's why I suggest a good way to start is to read one of the works here and kind of really be thinking about what are the big themes? Um, what are the, the main kind of character relationships that are going and even make a list and once you've done that kind of brainstorming, then you can think, all right, there must be something that you know of, a movie you've seen, a book you've read, a uh, TV show you, you like, a uh, graphic novel, uh, again, song, like the, the sky's the limit, really, that deals with basically that same theme. And so the interesting part <clears throat> is that, well, the benefit is that even though it's a little bit harder to get going, it's hopefully something that's more interesting to you because it reflects some of your existing interests. Um, <clears throat> but it also makes for an interesting comparison because if we just compared two very similar like literary texts, um, we already know that they're kind of, you know, similar. They exist in the same format, they're the same genre, they're meant to be literary. But if you were to compare trifles to a song that you know, and again you can use the video a little bit like we did for the um, the boys and girls and no doubt comparison, so you have that visual aspect as well, you really present like a sort of surprising thesis, an interesting thesis, because you're suggesting that two things that really don't seem similar or share nothing on the surface in common, in fact, do have something in common. So that's again why I like the way that this is um, designed, or that's why it's designed this way, is to, um, to, uh, to present some opportunities for you to be a little bit more invested and almost by default to create an interesting thesis. Uh, interesting for the reader, but also interesting for you as the writer. <clears throat> okay, so again, those two primary texts. Remind, remember, we have three secondary sources. Probably one related to your more traditional text, short story play, and then one that will we'll work to find uh, on that other thing that you're, you're writing about. Uh, reminder to look at the PowerPoint here below <clears throat> which is down right off the bottom of my screen here, about how to organize a comparison essay. Um, but ideally, we'll have another chance to talk about this as we get a little bit deeper. So the <clears throat> what's due for Unit 9 is clearly not the essay itself, but your tentative topic. And I get this is not contractual. You're not locked into it. You're just floating some ideas to get the ball rolling. Reply to at least two. <clears throat> um, 
And if you're really stuck, you can obviously email me, but one of the things you might want to do is actually say, I have some possibilities here, but I can't quite fill in the, the rest of it. Um, and then one of your replies or one of the replies to your post might pr uh, present to you an idea that you hadn't thought of, but that will really, right, that'll be that the aha moment or the light bulb goes off. So that's what's due for Unit 9, even though most of Unit 9 is the, the uh, essay assignment itself. All right, moving quickly, moving quickly. So then we have <clears throat> Unit 10, which is the opportunity for us to meet either virtually or face-to-face. -face. We have another discussion board where, again, you're giving us your topic again, hopefully a little bit more refined, but also your secondary sources. So notice that we're just moving kind of incrementally towards uh, you know, getting the essay done, putting the pieces together. And then there's a conference sign up here. Um, again, we can meet virtually using the virtual office that's over here in our course menu. We can meet on campus, all the numbers have changed, so I'll work that out. Um, but the big caveat here is that if, you, and I get how, especially in the online format, and especially, especially in our five week format, scheduling can be a real, real challenge for people. So if you happen to be one of those folks that just cannot possibly, you know, realistically do a virtual meeting, let alone a face-to-face -face meeting, um, just email me, right? I understand that. Uh, we'll agree to, to, uh, to correspond via email. Um, and the, the, the conference or even our exchange of emails is designed where you can really ask some targeted questions. So by the time we're doing this conference, you kind of want to have a relatively worked together draft of your essay. It gives us more specific to talk about. I can really point to things that are working or what you'd want to find out at this point, kind of not working. So that's unit 10, sorry I'm going so fast. We then have a peer exchange and I know people's experience with peer exchange can be pretty hit or miss. There will be groups here formed that you'll see. Um, you'll just, you'll have your essay document um, or a, a shared link that people can access. And then all we're gonna do is fill out the checklist here. You can of course provide more ample written feedback, right? That's always appreciated. But we're not just gonna exchange papers and be like, hey, what do you think? That's where peer review is kind of lame and it doesn't do anybody any good. We're gonna use this very specific checklist and you'll notice the things on the checklist are all things that we've covered in our course. And you can use this for your own essay too, not just for the people in your group. So it's a quick turnaround, but all you need to do is review the checklist against the essays that are, are posted in your group and then repost the checklist pointing to things that either are there, they're checked off, or if you notice some problems, that's where that feedback for the, the essay writer is gonna be really important. Um, even if the, the, the writer just like, oh, I thought I had done that, and then you can reach out to me and we'll figure out, is it there, is it not there, is the checklist right, or um, have you actually done it, but maybe in a slightly different way. So peer review, I know, but in a really, really targeted, kind of um, uh, a narrowly defined way. Okay, we're almost done, we're almost done. That's the peer review part, so we post, quick turnaround to get feedback into people's hands, and then you have basically a day, I know, it's just a quick turnaround, to do some last touches based on that peer review. And then the final essay is pretty straightforward. A last kind of, do you have these problems going on? And then right at the bottom, you're just submitting your essay. It's not a discussion board. Just submit the essay and you're done. Let me know if you want uh, the actual paper back or just the grade. Um, either way is totally fine. Okay, so again, Lots to do in our last couple weeks here, but hopefully you'll find it fairly right, uh, logically laid out. Um, manage your time. Uh, if you, if you wait too long, this is just you know there's lots of points riding on this. I, I don't want to sort of hide that fact, um, but we really really need to to manage our time starting at like unit nine all the way down to unit eleven. And again, it's a lot of text here, but it covers like what a week a week and a half maybe it's really it's quick okay so go into unit 10 at some point and sign up for a conference or let me know if that's just not a feasible thing for you to do and obviously especially as we get towards our big point final essay be in touch with me whenever you have a question or a concern or 
you know, just want to clarify something. All right, thanks for sticking with us. I know that's a lot to digest, but at least now it's kind of all on the table out in front of us.